In this video, I will show you how to combine shapes using the Shaper tool in Adobe Illustrator. First, I'd like to go over the capabilities of this tool using these examples. In the first column, I have a separate square and an O. In the second column, I have the finished example after using the Shaper tool. And in the third column, I will demonstrate what I did. Zooming in to the top row, I want to show you that they are separate to begin with, and here they are united together. Selecting the Shaper tool for the demo, you start from the inside of the square and click and drag a zigzag line which will tell Illustrator to connect these two into one. Notice that it does change the O into a blue fill, but there are ways to change it back I'll show you in the next demo. But first I want to show that the two shapes are still live. Using the Shaper tool, you can click on the objects to bring up what's called a Shaper group. You can now click on the square and notice that it can still be moved. So you can continue to make adjustments after the shapes are united. Next, you can use the Shaper tool to minus the overlapping front section from the shape that is behind it. You just use the Shaper tool to make a zigzag on the portion that is overlapped. However, this time you will start from the outside and draw a zigzag line from the artboard over the shape in front. Now when you click on it to bring up the Shaper group, you can click one more time to activate what's called the Face Selection Mode. Then you can make changes to the face selection you clicked on, like changing the fill color. You can go into the Face Selection Mode with any of these demos and make similar changes. You can also leave the intersection of the two shapes and delete everything else. Again, you will start from the outside and draw a zigzag shape and do that for the three sections, leaving the one section left. You can do the opposite and exclude the section where the shapes overlap, starting inside the overlapping area to draw your zigzag shape. This will remove that section. And you can do multiple steps to divide things even further and make each section separate. You will start inside to unite the objects like we did in the first demo. Then either double click to enter the face selection mode or click this down pointing arrow widget. In this construction mode, you can click the outer edge of the O, hold the shift key and click the inner edge and change the fill color of the O. It also selected this bottom corner of the square, so I'll just click on that selection and adjust the fill color again. I found that dividing the shape worked better when I could see the difference with the fill colors. Next, select the shape, come up to the menu bar, choose Object Expand, and then OK. Go back up to Object and Ungroup, and now you'll see that they are divided. So those are some of the techniques you can use with the Shaper tool. Let's put them into play back with the house drawing. First, I'll come over to my layers and lock any previous work to protect it. Then go to the bottom and click the plus sign. Add a new layer for your combined shapes. Your colors may be different than mine, but this layer is also magenta, so I'll need to double click and change it to a different highlight color. With that new layer selected, I'll collapse that panel. Now, one of the most popular shapes starts with two separate circles. I'll use my Alt or Option key to duplicate my first circle, making a copy. Then I'll overlap them and starting on the outside to make my zigzag, I'll remove the front, and now I have a crescent moon shape. I'll make some stars to go with the moon by overlapping triangles, and then zigzagging inside to connect all six points. Because I can still make adjustments if they're not placed correctly, I can double click to enter the construction mode and make any changes. And I can also add a fill color and remove the strokes, and I can duplicate this as many times as I wish using the Alt or Option key while clicking and dragging out copies. And then I can also adjust the placement, size, and rotation of all of these shapes using the bounding boxes. Another really fun thing you can do with shapes is adjust their points. I can leave them pointy or I can make them more rounded. 
This circle, which is called a corner widget, can be clicked and dragged to make it a round point or dragged back to make it more pointy. Notice that it's only doing it for one of my triangles, so in this case I need to click on the other triangle to make it match. It's a little small to see these corners, so let me demo that one more time using a larger triangle. Sometimes it can be difficult to see where the widget is. Notice that the widget for this triangle controls all of the points. And like I said, you can do this for other shapes as well. I'll show you this effect using a rectangle and you can use the corner widgets to make it a rounded rectangle or an oval shape. It's fun to play around with this widget, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete these for now. Next, I would like to draw some mountains, but I'm going to turn off the visibility of some of these layers so I can see better. I'll begin by drawing a triangle and then duplicating it multiple times, adjusting their proportions and placement to add some variety. Then I'll draw a zigzag through the entire mountain range to unite them into one. I'll duplicate that range and make some changes. And then I'll right click, choose a range, send to back. For this third range, I will add a bit more variety by right clicking and then choosing transform, reflect, and you'll see that the range will be flipped. I'll send that one to the back and make sure I'm covering all of the negative space between the ranges. And just for fun, I'll add one more copy and move that one into place. The next thing I'll show you is a cool way to have Illustrator shade your artwork. I'll choose the first mountain range and I'll give it a fill color. I think I'll go a bit darker. And then I'll use my selection tool to select all of the ranges. I will go to the menu bar and click on Object Expand and say OK. And then I'll go back up to Edit, Edit Colors, and choose Blend Front to Back. Now Illustrator has added lighter tints blending back from my first color. This is a great way to add visual unity by using the same tones. I'll turn back on the visibility of all the other layers. Then I'll move the mountains to the back by clicking on its layer and dragging it below all of the others. However, I need to move the mountains up in the picture plane, so in this layer, I'll click on this circle, which selects all the objects in that layer. Illustrator calls this circle a meatball. Now I can use my arrow keys, or I can grab the mountains and scooch them up in the picture plane. Then I'll need to go up to the stars and moon since they're on the same layer and adjust their placement as well. But that's fine because I wanted to make some changes to them anyway. If it bothers you that part of the design is falling off the edge of the artboard, you can use your shaper tool to draw out a rectangle over that section. Then use your arrow keys to align it with the edge of the artboard. Start your zigzag outside and draw on top of the rectangle, which will delete the other objects. I'll do the same on the other side, starting on the outside with the zigzag. But oops, it looks like it left two little parts. You can also use your shaper tool on its own and zigzag over those parts. Sometimes that works fine and sometimes you need the rectangle technique. My final step is to add another layer, which is going to be my gradient sky layer. And I'll turn off the visibility of other layers I might find distracting. I'll sketch out a large rectangle using my shaper tool. I'll resize that rectangle. I can turn the visibility of the other layers back on now so that I can see the placement. And I need to move the gradient sky below my combined shapes by clicking and dragging that layer. With my gradient sky layer still selected, I want to resize my picture here first. And then I will remove the stroke and add this faded sky gradient. It's very useful. You may wanna make adjustments so that it fits this scene better. So over in your collapsed panels, you have an icon for gradients. If you don't see this icon, you can go to window and choose gradient. And then to expand this panel, click these arrows. If you would like your angle of your gradient to be horizontal, you can go to this drop down and you can choose negative 90 degrees. 
You can also adjust these sliders to see how much color appears. For example, if you want to see a bit more white on the bottom, you can grab this circle. It's called a color stop, and you can move it to the left, closing the amount of space between the blue and white colors. You can also double click on a color stop, which allows you to change the color. This second icon shows our swatches, and you can choose different colors to see how they look. Unlike some designers, I wait to add the sky color until the end because as you can see, different shades make drastically different effects on the mood and look of the artwork. At this step, I feel like I'm finished, so it's a great time to get feedback from my peers. Nobody liked my rounded stars, so I'll go ahead and delete those. And they pointed out that this star is a little too large. Another suggestion was that my mountains were too pointy. Since I expanded the mountains, they're now a group, so I'll need to use my selection tool to click on them. And I can press the command or control key to bring up the corner widgets. Since the mountains were grouped through the blending colors feature, one widget controls all of the corners. I didn't try it, but I assume I would have to ungroup if I wanted to adjust a single mountain range. If you go up to view and choose presentation mode, you'll see what your final artwork will look like enlarged on your screen. And I think this looks pretty good. So my next step is to save. I will go to file, save as, and I'll save it on my Creative Cloud in the folder for this class. I save it as my first name, last initial, underscore 01.5, combining shapes with the Shaper tool. I'll click Save and OK. And that is how you combine shapes using the Shaper tool in Adobe Illustrator.